doing random research on certain scientific topics. So Kiva, thanks for coming. Thanks for taking up the offer. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being a part of this. And it's the stage is yours. So yeah, stage is yours to do pretty much what you, you came here to do. Do have a blessed day, everyone. <laughs> Um, thank you, Bobby. Um, just give me a, a minute setting up my camera. All right, so good afternoon, everybody. Everybody's hearing me, right? Yeah, we're hearing. All right, great. So um, today I'll be presenting on, oh, um, as Bobby said, my name is Kiefer Dennis. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Um, I hope we will have a very informative session. I hope you will learn something from this session. So today I'll be presenting on outside photography using your mobile phone, right? So let's get into the presentation. So some tips for mobile photography. Tip number one, embrace negative spaces. Um, so for those who don't know, a negative space is a space around a subject, around the subject of an image. So a person in a picture would be the subject and the space around them would be the negative space. So embrace negative space. So when you use a lot of, when you use a lot of negative space, it allows the subject to be the focus of that, of that picture, right? So embrace negative spaces to ensure that your subject stands out. So tip number two, find different perspectives. Now this um, is a little speaking on angles, right? So when you use different angles, it may provide you with some, some unique shots. Okay. So an angle. Pardon? Could you, um, hi, could you indicate if you're hi. hearing me? Yeah, I'm hearing you. You are? Oh, okay, I'm so sorry for interrupting your presentation. You may continue. I'm the host and I was having some microphone issues. Okay, that's fine. So continue the presentation. Um, so tip number two, finding different perspectives, as I said, and this has a lot to do with angles, how you angle your picture how you angle taking the photo. So when you find a, a good angle, it gives the picture a sense of uniqueness and it adds some depth. And for, for example, if you were to take one from a low angle, it would give it a towering effect. So use, utilizing the angles, finding different perspectives. Tip number three, um, you guys should have the, I'm assuming you guys have the presentation, it was sent, or it should have been sent. So you should be following up with me as well. Um, so using leading lines. So leading lines are shots, are lines in a shot that draw users to a specific part of the frame. So this can be a train line, a walkway, a road, anything like that, a staircase. So you use that to map to a specific section of your frame. So tip number four, try to avoid zooming in. So I know this is um, an issue. I see a lot of persons taking a photo and they zoom in because it's too far, yeah, whatever, closer, whatever. It's when you do that now, you, it causes the photo to be blurred or pixelated. So if it is that you can avoid zooming in to take a photo on your phone, I would advise that you avoid it. So the use of natural light. Um, I know some of you may be big on the taking of photos, selfies, and posting on Instagram. You know, when you see that person take them selfie and them will glow, like the sun reflect off them skin, yeah, man, natural light is great take advantage of natural light. Um, 
it's it's really beautiful. I love to see when persons utilize natural light as opposed to editing a photo. All right, so I don't think this is on the presentation that was sent to you guys. And that was an error on my part, but invest in a mobile tripod. So if it is that you plan to take mobile photography seriously, or if it is that you, um, you're someone who likes to take pictures at least, then I would advise that you invest in a mobile tripod. What this helps with now is it helps with keeping the balance, keeping everything leveled and smooth when you're taking a photo. Um, it's a case where also if you, you want to take a photo, entire area, you in the picture as well, there's no one else there, you can then utilize that tripod to help take that photo. So invest in a mobile tripod if it is that you plan to use this, to plan to take photos outside of you. Moving right along, um, tip number seven, set your phone's camera, your phone camera's exposure. So for persons who don't know the exposure, when you tap on your screen, you may know that it refocuses and the lighting change, stuff like that, that is your exposure. So it normally, most phones, it sets automatically. So what you can do is you can check if, you, if you're familiar with your camera app, you would see that sometimes when you're taking a photo, you have a vertical scale with a sun icon on it that is used to control the exposure on your phone, on your camera app. So you adjust the, the exposure on your camera app to ensure that the lighting for your picture is perfect. And I have some examples on the presentation. I, as I said, I hope you guys have the presentation so you can look at the examples as we move along. So taking candids. Um, I know some, of, some persons love to take candids. Um, some persons don't. I really preference, but a candid photo can be a good way to capture a good image, right? So it, you get some unique photos when you take a candid that you probably wouldn't get when someone is conscious are aware of the fact when the subject is conscious that they're taking a photo, you may not get that same smile or that same level of happiness or excitement. So when you're taking a candid photo now, you can capture moments like that. So the best way to capture a candid photo is to take a lot of pictures, especially if the subject is like moving around and stuff like that. You just utilize that and hopefully you will end up with a good candid photo. All right, so the grid lines. Um, some persons don't have the grid lines activated on their camera up in their on their mobile phones. What I suggest to you is that you turn it on, you go in your camera settings and you turn on the grid lines. Now, the grid lines. Sorry, sorry about that. So the grid lines, um, it speaks on the rule of thirds principle, right? Which is really that your image should be broken into thirds horizontally and vertically, and you'll end up with nine parts in total. So you normally use the, the points of intersection or the line, whether horizontally or vertically, to focus on the subject. That way you get a better depth in a photo and it's more balanced as well. All right, so we're moving on to how to use the Android Pro mode, right? For Android users out there, we have the Android Pro mode presentation now. So if you open the camera up on your Android smartphone and scroll through the shooting modes, you're bound to see one which says either manual, pro, expert, or something very similar. The Pro mode limits interference from the phone's AIs or scene recognition algorithm. So you know, sometimes when you open a camera to take a photo and it starts adjusting. That is what it turns off. It turns that off when you activate the pro mode. So when you first switch to pro mode, you'll, you'll see many buttons with values next to them that constantly changes as you move the phone around. It's easy to get in, um, intimidated by this rather, but there's no need to. If you use any DSLR, then you might have noticed a dial which has PASM. Written on it. P 
stands for program auto mode, which is what your phone is in when you select pro mode. In this mode, the value for ISO, shutter speed, and white balance will be automatically adjusted based on what's in the frame. So pro mode in Android, you, in Android, use a higher shutter speed for action shots. Shutter speed lets you contro control the amount of time the electronic shutter is kept open. A longer time results in more light entering the sensor, but this can also introduce motion blur if you shake your hand. A shorter or faster shutter speed chops less light on the sensor, but is able to freeze any action in time. So what's, what that's basically saying is for, if you're trying to capture a fast moving object, it's better you use a fast. Um, it's better use a shutter and fast rather. So a, a bird flying or a car moving, it's better use a shutter and fast. For you know that pictures when you run the light and it shows up like an image. Um, so you can use, you can adjust the speed of your shutter. So Use a lower ISO for less noise in low light. The ISO level determines the sensor's sensitivity to light. A lower value is best used when there's ample light around, but when shooting in low light, a higher value increases the sensitivity, so even a small light source is enough to give you a decent image. However, a high ISO value also introduces a noise or grain in the image. In more circumstances, it's best to leave the ISO at auto. However, if you want to get a better low lit shot, you could try using a longer shutter time and a lower ISO for a brighter image while keeping noise to a minimum. Remember that the phone will have to be stabilized. So either use the tripod that I was telling you about before or rest against something that will avoid motion blur. So shoot in raw. And RAW is basically what it sounds like. Um, it's shooting the photo without adding any extra effects to it. So if you love editing photo, that's ideal for you, as it says here. So shooting RAW will give you the best flexibility instead of saving just a JPEG. Just like DSLRs, most camera-centric smartphones today have the ability to shoot in RAW format, along with JPEGs. Raw images have much larger files as they pack in all the data that the sensor picks up and it's up to you to keep or discard what you want. So if you love editing, that's your thing, then that's your mode to use to take a photo. Manually, manually adjust the white balance. The white balance is an important metric in photography as it determines the color tone of your image. It pretty much, in pretty much any manual mode in the smartphone, you will have the option to manually change the white balance from present, like sunny, presets rather, like sunny, cloudy, etc., to actually picking a cooler temperature, which is usually measured in kelvins. So white balance, basically, I don't know if, you, if any of you have ever used a camera, hopefully that is so, but when you change the white balance, you will see that it increases or decreases the amount of light that is shown on your image when you're taking the photo. So we're moving on to the iPhone portrait mode now, right? So portrait mode on the iPhone creates a depth of field effect that blurs the background of your photo while keeping the subject in sharp focus. This is also known in photography as bokeh. I've also heard it being pronounced other ways like bokeh. So I guess the pronunciation is up to you, but once you know what that is, that is fine. Typically, you need to use a DSLR camera with a particular lens to get the right aperture for this effect, which is why we associate it with professional portrait photography. How does it work? Portrait mode on the iPhone uses software algorithms to fa fabricate a depth of field effect because portrait mode creates the depth of field effect from scratch. You can actually make it more or less intense by dragging an aperture slider in the camera app. So for iPhone users, you should be familiar with that when you go on a portrait mode and you run the, the slider and it changes the depth effect. 
portrait mode looks best if you frame your subject in front of a detailed background, like a bush or a busy street. This way, it's obvious the background is blurred, which isn't the case in front of a blank wall. You should also make sure your subject isn't too close to the background. Otherwise, portrait mode might struggle to separate the foreground and the background. So use things that are, use backgrounds rather that are easily blurred, that way that the subject stands out while the rest of the image is blurred. If you put it to on a block on a blank wall, rather it won't show as well. So portrait mode lighting effects, natural light, no additional light, no additional lighting effects are added. Studio light, facial features brightened to mimic photo studio lights. Contour light, sharper lighting creates dramatic highlights and low lights. Stage light. Imitate a spotlight and plunge the background into darkness. Stage light mono, the same as stage light but in black and white. High key light mono, create a white background with a black and white subject. So for iPhone users, um, I believe it's from seven, seven going up. You should be familiar with these features on the portrait mode, the natural light, the studio light, or some X rather, from eight or X going up. You should be familiar with those features and they give you a different feel each of them. Um, my favorite one is the natural light or the studio light, but depending on what you're capturing, you can swing it around. So yeah. So the benefits of mobile photography. Your camera is nearly always with you. This makes it easy to engage in photography as part of your normal daily life. Camera phones are light and easy to transport. You don't need to lug around lots of lenses and a heavy camera body. There, there are a huge variety of apps available so that you can shoot, edit, and upload your image straight from your device without the need to con connect to a computer. Less complicated than digital cameras, easy for the ordinary individual who would not be a photographer to master. So disadvantages of mobile photography now. Mobile phone lenses tend to be low resolution, often producing images that can be enlarged or printed very effectively. Not having a viewfinder means that it can be difficult photographing a bright light. Although you can buy interchangeable lenses for your phone, they are expensive and most people stick with the lens that comes with the phone instead of you know, getting an additional lens. It is tempting to rely on the apps to make your picture interesting rather than working a bit harder to create successful images. So it makes you a lazy photographer, basically. All right, so wrapping up now, I have some of the better smartphone camera options. I did some research on them. And currently we have the iPhone 12 series with, with the Pro and the Pro Max. We have the Huawei P40 Pro um, for your presentation. That was sent to you. It might say PRP, but it should be Pro. So it's the Huawei P40 Pro and the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. So based on research I've conducted, those are some of the best camera options, phone camera options currently on the market. So if you're very interested and you can afford to, you can look up, you can try and get one of those phones to make your mobile photography experience better. And yeah, that is the end of the presentation on mobile phones. Um, I believe we should be having a Q&A session, right? Yes, most definitely. That was such a beautiful presentation. I mean, there are some things that I didn't even consider when I was taking pictures that now I have really, really understood the importance of it. So now the floor is open for everyone who wants to ask questions, you know, um, things that may have not been so clear. The floor is now open um, in the chat over on YouTube. You guys can send your questions in now. Okay, so um, you hearing me? Yeah, I'm hearing you. Okay, so I wanted to know um, what is like the main difference between um, the DSLR is that um, single lens, single lens, right? Yeah, single lens arm um, reflex. I'm wanting to know what's the difference between single lens and a camera with double lens. 
All right, so for the difference between the lenses, it hold on. Hold on, let me fix this. Give me a second, I'm trying to fix something on this phone. Kifa, are you there? I'm there. I'm trying to fix the position of the phone. It's not charging. So give me a few seconds. All right, then no problem. In the meanwhile, guys, I hope that you will take the initiative to follow our social media pages at UE Commuters, UE Commuters PCC. And we'll link the other, the other pages in the chat so you guys can follow. So when you start taking all of your bomb pictures and you know you want to show off your skills, the skills that you learned today and that you will learn for the rest of the week, you can just tag us and we'll definitely, definitely know that you are here and you are showing out, you are doing, you are listening and you know, you're, you're excited to use the skills and all of that great stuff. So ensure that you follow our pages. They are sent. They're in the chat now. Right. So you can follow our pages and tag us when you take your awesome pictures. I, it was okay, such it a... Was, go you ahead. Already know? No. It was, I was... Okay. So the question was, what was the difference between the single lens and the double lens the dual lens all right so basically the single lens is the normal dslr as you rightfully stated to the person who asked the question um the double lens however it it's one of the lens focuses on the viewfinder right and the other which is the focus really itself so one lens focuses on focus in layman's term the viewfinder and the other is used to actually capture the photo. Okay, thank you. Okay. Another question in the chat. Do you have any brands you recommend for the tripod? Um, not really any brands to recommend, I would recommend you go on Amazon and look for some. Um, what I could do is I should have a link to some. I could get that link after the presentation, send it to Bobby, and he could possibly share it with you because I'm assuming he has the email address for you guys. So our, for the specific person that's asking, I right. have a link okay. with some good tripods. Okay, then most definitely. Another question is, is Candid Burst, and this is from Natiki Bennett. Nat Nataki right. Bennett. Nataki Bennett. I have Candid, so when you talk about Candid, I must say, and on my own, I saw Burst. So I was wondering if if it's the same thing. On your presentation that you received? No, on my phone itself. I don't have. I don't have Candid. Oh or... no, Candid. Candid isn't a feature. I know. Candid is the act of taking a picture. Is try to phrase it so you'll properly understand. So, you know, normally you pose for a photo. A candid photo is one that you don't pose for, right? So you're in motion, talking, you're just there smiling, whatever, and you take the photo while the person is doing all of that. So that's a candid, it's not really a feature. It's best to take it. A burst could, use, could be used to get good candid pictures, but it's not a feature. Oh, okay, I understand. Another question in the chat. 
oh, it's not a question. Saini is actually saying it's an off guard pick. Yes, so basically, it's an off guard photo. Okay, so I have a question for you. Um, sure. when, you when using the iPhone, is there, so we know we have different upgrades to the iPhone. So I have an mm -hmm. iPhone 8, but I have friends who have an 8 plus. Um, but, and the, the camera quality, it, there's a drastic difference. So mm -hmm. how do you think that I could adjust my camera um, so it could be, you know, up to par as those with the A plus? All right, so you have an A plus and you're speaking, your, your friends have something later than that. All right, right. so. Right. Naturally, you, you are limited to some of the features that someone with an iPhone 12 would have. Um, I also suggest that if you do, if you can, your friends can take the photo. And I do recommend sending through WhatsApp because I see that's a common thing that we do. But if it is that like both of you have an yeah. iPhone, I message it or airdrop it or even email it. But when you send it through WhatsApp, the, the quality falls drastically, right? As I said, you're, yes. you're, you're going to be at a disadvantage in terms of quality if you have an A plus as opposed to 12. I'm not sure about Telegram. I said, I said that question, Papa. I'm not sure about Telegram. That's new to me. But um, you will be at a disadvantage, but you can still take quality photos. This is some of the tips that I just used. You can take that, you can get good pictures right. with um, even iPhone 6 if you fit some of those, if you meet some of those criteria to get a quality picture, the lighting, using up your grid lines and all that, mm -hmm. setting your exposure properly. So just go outside, find a, a nice light and have, have some fun with your 8 Plus because an 8, a 8 or 8 Plus still has a good quality camera, just not a 12 or 11. Right. Okay. Um, another question in the chat. This is from Celine. In terms of taking photos on your phone, which would you say is the best way to take photos, landscape or portrait? It depends. Um, it will vary. I, I'm not a big fan of landscape photos, but um, if it is that a case where you have, if you don't have a wide angle, if your phone can do a wide angle picture, then landscape may be your best option, right? Okay. But if you can stick to the portrait, then I would advise you to stick to the portrait. All right, then, wonderful. Checking the chat for any more questions. So I have a comment from Errol Green. For the iPhone users, we don't have a pro mode, but there are many apps which give you the type of control. I recommend Yamera. Okay. So this is a yes. response. And he is correct. iPhone does not have a pro mode, but you can definitely um, go and get some apps or some software that will add assist you in getting some of the pro mode features. Yes. Another question or a suggestion from Sasha Whitehorn. She's asking if you have any tips for taking portrait photos, I guess, in addition to what was presented. All right, so um, as I said, find a background where the person will stand out because the background will be blurred and the subject will pop basically it will appear like the subject pops i find that depending on the time of day the lighting also helps with portrait mode portrait mode definitely gives you a glow if you need a glow on your photo you go outside natural light set and the natural light mm -hmm. portrait mode to be specific it gives you a great glow so you can utilize that um if you want to be creative the um mono mode is also good the black and white you can do some nice art looking type photos with that you know be creative with it okay um i have a, a question from ariel hamilton are there I I apps that question. you oh, no. okay that's not the one that's not the one continue so interesting okay, question for so a while ago but continue Okay. Um, are there apps we can use to make a photo look like it was taken in portrait mode, free or paid? All right. There are apps, but it will never be the same effect 
but there are apps that come close. Um, I know Snapseed is a good editing app and it has a, a lens blur feature that blurs the background and lets the subject pop. That's a good one. But it will never give you the same pop as the actual portrait mode. Okay. And I think I'm seeing the question you're, you were referring yeah. to earlier. Yeah. And this is from Sterling James. So which do you think takes better pics, iPhone or Android? All right. Well, personally for me, I'm an Android user. I'm an iPhone user rather. But um, Android definitely has some quality photos. I won't say one takes a better picture. I think it comes down to what you prefer. It's what you want because they don't do the same thing as we just explained. One has the pro mode and all that, and one is portrait mode and all that. But definitely, um, one of the issues I've seen with some, with some Android phones, I won't say all, is because of the amount of features that are on the camera app, when you upload it to social media, for example, the quality is a lot different because the media that you upload it on doesn't support those edits. But other than that, if it's to have the, the photo for yourself, they're both good. They're both great. Um, it's just what you prefer. Um, Kamisha is saying that Android smooths too much. And I can attest to that, that I yeah, do it, see the smoothing effect. It does. It does. Um, persons have tend to say that um, when you have an iPhone, it shows the ugly side in comparison to uh, Android. Um, but I, that's a, I think that's a beautification setting and you can turn it down, but even then it still has a bit of a smoothing effect in comparison yeah. to, the, to the iPhone. Okay, so I don't think there are any more questions in the chat. So I think you've answered everything that our audience wants to know. And if I you have a I'm question, you can raise your hand. No, and right, right. right. So I'm guessing that there are no more questions. Well, even though it was a rough start for me, I can definitely say that I really did enjoy the presentation today. It was so, so meaningful, especially with me who I'm trying, trying to take some nice pictures, trying to make my Instagram look nice, and it is not easy. Um, <laughs> so I really did enjoy this. I know I learned nof nof. I know everyone learned to nof nof. Um, mm -hmm. I'm seeing a comment in the chat. You can use BIP and send photos in HD. Okay. Okay, that's a good suggestion as well. Right. So, guys, as I said before, this was a really fulfilling, really fulfilling. Um, session today. I really enjoyed it. I know you guys enjoyed it. Thank you, Kifo, for coming with such a wonderful presentation. Um, another question. Um, let me get that up. BIP is for Android users. I'm not sure is if it for Android users. I'm not sure if it's limited to Android. Um, I don't use BIP, but I know of it. So I believe everyone should be able to use it though. I've never heard of anyone being limited based on their phone type. Um, Ariel okay. Hamilton said everyone could use it. Uh, yes, I don't use BIP, right? I prefer if I need to transfer the file and we have different phones, I will email it. Okay, most definitely. Um, Orlando is saying, I recommend using the Lightroom app. It takes better pics than the regular photos app. Okay. So as I said before, it was a wonderful presentation. Thank you, Sir Kifa, for coming and presenting. Um, it was really, really impactful. I learned so much. I know everyone present learned a lot as well. Um, on behalf of the entire team, let me just take this opportunity to thank everyone who came out, um, came out in your numbers. I'm so excited to see so many persons interested and seizing the moment, seizing the opportunity to learn about photography, something that um, we can all branch in and just, you know, have the skill. We never know when we'll need it, when we'll have to bounce back 
work on it. So this was really, really a good effort by the Commuters Publications Committee. And I must thank them and big them up, those who were working in the background, you know, ensuring that this all went smooth. Thank you so much, Bobby, for jumping on when my computer decided to not make me or this program great. Thank you guys so much for coming out. I truly appreciate it. Um, uh, so another question okay. just now. Okay. Yes, I'm back, guys. My Wi-Fi, you know, you know how <laughs> the Wi-Fi issue is in Jamaica. Definitely. But um, I just saw another question about how long it takes to become a professional photographer. So mm, I'm not a professional photographer, but I, I know how to take some photos, right? But I know professional photographers who have done it in less than three years. I've, I've, I have professional photographer friends who they came to the university not knowing nothing about a camera and now they're like top photographers. So it's, it's a skill that once you're dedicated, you can learn in very quick succession. Okay. And I have a question that just popped up in my head. Um, as a, you know, a little photographer, what do you enjoy taking photos of? Uh, well, um, as a fan of geography, I love taking photos of landscapes, um, natural landscapes and nature. So that's something I enjoy. I don't think I do it enough. Um, usually I'm, when I'm on campus though, I'll be walking. I know the mountain, sometimes the view is beautiful. I just take out my phone right. and try to take a photo of the mountains. So I love taking pictures of landscapes, natural landscapes, and of course, anything in nature. So sometimes I even see like a little spider and I'll try to take a one nice photo of that spider. <laughs> so my prefer my personal use. Right. And that's so nice. Um, as I'm I I have I have had opportunities where I've tried to to, you know, um tap into that part of my artistic mm -hmm. abilities, but it has not worked out so well. <laughs> But I'm still I'm sure trying and with yeah, all that there. I learned today, I'll definitely <laughs> right. I'm definitely applying what I learned today. Um, yeah. I have one person in the chat saying, um, thanks for giving us the opportunity to improve our skills, most definitely. Um, I think it's really important in this day and age that we're not, you know, that we're multifaceted and we can, you know, jump from air to air, spear to spear. We're not relying on one thing, one thing for Definitely. income or just for leisure, right? Um, so guys, once again, thank you all for coming out. This was such a beautiful program. I really did enjoy it. It was wonderful seeing you all in your numbers. It was wonderful, Kiva, for seeing you come out with such a wonderful presentation. Again, I'm so grateful for this opportunity to learn. And I know that you all are as well. Um, ensure that you follow our social media pages, as I said before, so when you start you know, using your skills and all that, you can tag us so that we can see and understand that it was impactful for you as it was for me. So big up to the Commuters Publications Committee for putting this on. This was such a wonderful program, as I said before. And this program spans from today till Friday, February 22nd to February 26th from 1 to 3, but we're ending a little early today. Um, no, no problem with that. Um, I'm looking Another forward to fan of long presentations. You know, uh, right. People, right. People get bored very quickly, so I try to get straight to the point. Myself included, a short attention span, <laughs> but it was short and spicy, and I loved that. I know everyone did as well. So, one o'clock tomorrow again, same time same place. I'm looking forward to seeing you all. Thank you guys for coming. I really did appreciate it.